Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for the first ever online Celebrating Reuse Building Community Auction and Award Ceremony. I'm Katie Duell, Executive Director at Home Resource. I'm wearing a mask, it'll come off at some points, but, and we have lots of pictures of folks without masks, but we want you to know that we've taken every safety precaution we can. I'd like to recognize that this land is the traditional territory of the Tunaha, Kalispell, and Salish people. We acknowledge that the land that we stand on today and indeed all the lands that people have come from to be here were taken from the indigenous peoples through a historic and ongoing process of colonization, which is the violent dispossession and disconnection from their traditional lands, lifeways, and language through practices of treaty making and breaking assimilation and force. At Home Resource, we respect people, community and materials. We recognize that this land is sacred and that all those things that the land produces and supports are sacred as well. The people, the animals, the materials and the interdependent communities that tie those things together. We must hold them with respect and accord them dignity. There are many ways to do that and we can all and must do it better. But today we take one step by honoring the value of all people, of the land and the materials it produces and the intersection of the communities that connect us. I'd like to thank some of our significant program sponsors, First Security Bank, Attorneys Legal Protection Service, Alps, the Lewis Boric Foundation, and in particular, the High Stakes Foundation, which has provided the match for the fund the need portion of our auction tonight. By way of introducing this year's Volunteer of the Year, I wanna take a minute and recognize the Home Resource Board of Directors for their incredible volunteer service through a deeply challenging time. As for the actual award, we're turning it back to you folks and anyone who has given their time, their money, their skills, their gratitude and perspectives to individuals and organizations during this intense year. It is HERO's work and a year that has both asked much of us and shown us how very important community is. You are all volunteers of the year. Thank you for your service. Speaking of volunteers, I'd like to now introduce Juanita Vero of the Ebar L Ranch and Missoula County Commissioner, who's giving her time to this event as our MC tonight. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. So tonight, we're gonna fund the future of home resource. We have $75,000 is our goal and every dollar is matched. So your, your donations are gonna go twice as far. So we're really excited. So you guys are all here tonight. Thank you so much. We've also had a special cake made um, by our friends at Bernice's Bakery. And for every $5,000 we get, we get a piece of cake. So the goal tonight is to eat that cake. There should, be a, uh, there should be a viewing of this beautiful cake here. Um, so right now we have, looks like our donation amount, we've raised 31,000 so far. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> nice job, everyone. So that means we have about 45,000 left to raise in the next hour or so. And um, we can also do this. So get out your phones. You're going to text 76278. Text 76278 and write the word give and your donation amount. Again, 76278. Write the word give and your donation amount. You can also make a donation online at home resource dot givesmart.com. We're so grateful for your support to Home Resource and their work to build a vibrant and sustainable community. We'd like to thank some of our folks who've already given and gotten us to this point. Let's see here. <laughs> I'm not seeing our um having a little technical difficulty. We're not seeing our list yet. Why don't we move right we'll in? We'll just jump into our trailblazers. Yep. <laughs> We're gonna announce our trailblazer of the year now. 
We've done this for the last two years, awarded a Trailblazer of the Year Award, Zero Waste Trailblazer, to someone who has done outstanding and innovative work to move our community forward in zero waste. This year, I'm delighted to announce our Trailblazer, Grace Gibson Snyder. Congratulations, Grace. Grace did not know she was gonna win this award, but I did ask her to tell us the story of her work. And I think you'll quickly see for yourselves why this exceptional young woman is being honored tonight. Hi, Grace. <laughs> Hi. Grace? Oh, yes. We're going to, uh, Grace <laughs> performed her, the story. She gave it to us on a video. So we're going to show that video in just a minute. Thank you for being here with us. Of course. Do you wanna? Video. Tell us anything about, oh, there's Grace again. <laughs> I, I would tell you parts of the story, but it's best when you hear it from Grace herself. <laughs> Grace, I'm a senior at Hellgate High School. I'm turning 17 on Friday. Um, my original interest in climate started with my best friend. She is Marshallese, so her heritage is from the Marshall Islands. And somehow, at about age five, we heard that the rising sea levels could completely cover the Marshall Islands. So we made flyers that said, save the Marshall Islands. And I'm sure we spelled it wrong, um, but we hung it up all around town. And that was my first exposure to the potential effects of climate change on someone I know, someone I love. The other piece that contributed to my work in climate and my passion around climate change is growing up in Missoula. I think being here provides a connection to, the, to nature that someone who grows up in a city won't have. Uh, we have all these amazing opportunities to experience the spectacular outdoor around us. For example, I go to Yellowstone every year for my birthday and someone who lives in a city doesn't have that in such close proximity. And so I think we, or I personally, and us as a, as a city have a connection to nature that is, is really unique. And so fast forwarding um, into about early 2018, maybe. Uh, so about two and a half years ago, my mom showed me an article about how China decided to stop taking our plastic recycling. There was a picture of a backhoe on like this mountain of plastic that I remember and it was it was huge. It made the backhoe look tiny. And so I didn't even know at that point that China had been taking our recycling, but it made me realize that if the rest of the world can't cope with how much plastic recycling we're producing, there's definitely too much being produced. And so that I started thinking about how we should probably move the emphasis away from recycling to the other two sides of the reduce, reuse, recycle triangle, the reducing and the reusing part. And so if we're looking at Missoula, um, in some ways we're super eco-friendly. We have Home Resource leading the effort in zero waste and education, reusing materials. We have a bunch of other nonprofits and community groups that are helping Missoula to be more sustainable. Um, the city government and the MCPS school district are doing quite well in efforts towards zero waste. Um, so in general, the city is doing quite well. One thing I saw that still needs some work is using plastics to transport food. It's just like straws have become a social media trend because they're really visible and everyone uses them. I saw that plastic containers to transport food were really tangible and really prevalent. So I started to design BYO 
It stands for bring your own. It comes from bring your own beer, but in this case, it's, uh, it means bring your own containers. And so it started as a simple program where instead of using the plastic containers that restaurants provide, customers can bring their own reusable containers from home. In addition to creating less waste, I hope that by shifting the responsibility to the customers to bring their own con containers and to remember to have that sustainable habit, they will start to notice things in the rest of their life that they can also do to be more sustainable. The first thing I did was I made stickers. That was very exciting. Um, but that was about as far as I got before I was stuck on how to move forward, how to get people involved, everything I needed to do to make this a successful program. So next I met with Katie Duell and Jeremy Drake here at Home Resource. Over the course of two years, they have become my mentors in BYO, and they helped me revise the program. They connected me with people all around town in the government, in the restaurants. They pointed out a bunch of potential problems with, <laughs> with the program. Um, they and Home Resource were key to the development of BYO because they provided expertise around the issue of zero waste that I was so new to. And only because of them do I still believe in the potential success of BYO, and only because of them has it developed into a plausible program. So long story short, two years later, it has developed into a city-wide plan. And so there would be a set of reusable containers distributed to participating restaurants that would send them home with customers who would bring them back to the, any of the restaurants to be sanitized and reused. So that's where we're at now. There was obviously a bit of disruption in March uh, when the pandemic hit, and so uh, for now, BYO is on hold. I do want to emphasize that although I chose to put BYO on hold so that I could survive the college application process, I do think that now, <laughs> during the pandemic, is a great time to rework our traditional systems to become more sustainable. Everything is changing, and I see no reason why it shouldn't change in a way that benefits people and the planet. I'd like to end by talking about the future. My future is in college. I would tell you where, but I have no idea yet. Uh, like I said before, I plan to work in international environmental policy. I think that policy work, like how Home Resource has been contributing to the city's policy, uh, is and changing the actions of governments, is where we need to be working and focusing to create big enough changes to impact the whole world. I want to be frank in saying that I see the future as being pretty scary. I'm not confident in the ability of the world to make enough change that we can reverse or um, at least <laughs> not advance climate change. Um, I believe I speak for a lot of my generation in saying that I'm scared and I'm kind of depressed. Actually, yeah, I'm depressed <laughs> and I think things look ugly in the future. Um, and I also think I speak for many in saying that the only way we can make progress here is to keep trying. We need to work on lowering emissions and reusing materials and moving towards zero waste. And we need to educate people so that more and more become involved. And so this is what Home Resource is doing successfully right now. They have a massive impact already on our community and we need to support them in continuing and expanding the work that they do so that our community, all of Missoula, can become engaged in this work that keeps our city sustainable and keeps our world clean. The only way we're going to get to the point we need to be at of sustainability yeah. is together. We need you to make changes in your own life and we need you to help Home Resource to continue to make sustainable social change so that we can keep our home city of Missoula as beautiful as it always has been. Let's give it up for Grace, woo! So now we're going to uh, move into our, let's see here, we have some donations that have come in. This is fantastic, well done. We're also gonna move into our raffle drawing now. Let's see here, okay. We have our bucket here. This is for the wine raffle, this is wine from wardens and our wine winner is elizabeth weaver congratulations elizabeth. Hooray, elizabeth thank you so much okay oh we got one more here hold on 
We have um, beer. Let's see here. This is beer from Big Sky Brewing. Four cases and a case of hard seltzer too. Let's see here. And our beer winner is Ashley Parks. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Ashley and Elizabeth. Um, now again, we need to keep those donations coming. So text 76278, type the word give and your donation amount. Or again, you can go to homeresource.givesmart.com. Oh, and did we fit another one? And we have another goal. Fantastic. We get to have another piece of cake. Well done, everyone. Woo! <laughs> um, oh, and here, I think, we have Keely here. Nope, Keely is not coming up. But anyways, I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to turn it over to Katie, and she's going to tell us um, about all things home resource. Well done. I'm going to take off my mask for this, folks, so you can see my face, and I'm the only one in the room. When COVID was first announced in Missoula, we were prepared. We had a plan, the home resource pandemic plan. In the files, we were nervous, sure, uncertain, you bet. A little smug, maybe. We had a plan. We would close the store for two weeks and pay all the staff to stay home and shelter in place and then get back after it. Maybe I shouldn't start by admitting our naivete. Maybe we all had our moments of naivete. When the COVID came to Missoula, we had 24 staff on the payroll relying on us for their wages. We had four youth interns ready to start their job training employment three permanently employed work program participants, some significantly immunocompromised, a steady and consistent stream of dedicated volunteers, 30 plus fifth grade classes scheduled and ready for their three-part interactive ZWAP, that's the Zero Waste Ambassadors Program folks, and at least two area schools ready to become zero waste and an in-person forward-facing construction and demolition roundtable scheduled with diverse stakeholders to find solutions and start implementing them to reduce the waste footprint of that most wasteful of industries. We had five community woodshop workshops on the calendar for folks who might otherwise never get that opportunity. We had a reuse oriented artist ready to be in residence and turn our materials to creative genius. We had between 100 and 300 customers coming through our store each day and we estimate that we touch over half Missoula households every year. We had a community relying on us for work, for leadership, for skills and expertise, for affordable materials, and a place to bring items that are used, but by no means trash. We did send everyone home. We put up signs, we changed our social media sites, and then spent the time that it took to revamp our systems so we felt we could open safely and continue to move the two and a half tons of material that flow through our retail store daily and deliver our multiple and various community-centered programs. I kept coming into work during those early weeks when everyone was home and our front doors were locked with lengths of chain. I developed a ridiculous martial arts routine involving lots of high kicks and fancy footwork to get into the building and up to my office without touching anything. I remember sitting at my desk one day, feeling like a deer in the headlights of my continually updating email, how to apply for a PPP loan, what the PPP loans are, how to avoid scams, where COVID is now, what the numbers are now, how to wash your hands, how to run a virtual meeting, how to make a mask, how to wear a mask, what masks work, who needs masks, what the symptoms of COVID are, everything how it spreads, how long it stays on what surfaces, ad infinitum. I recall how surreal it was. I got up from my desk and left that virtual blue light bombardment and came downstairs one day. I stood right in the middle of the empty warehouse. The only breathing being in that vast space, if you don't count the mice, packed with the smooth and the sharp, the dull and the bright, the long, awkward and heavy, the compact and the delicate, the antique and the nouveau fancy, the characteristic hodgepodge of the home resource inventory. I felt the weight of all that potential around me, rooting me. 
I stood in that space and summoned something within myself to figure out exactly what to do next and realized we are forever changed no matter what we do next. And what to do next became clearer in that little letting go. We must do what we've always done, what we do best, as safely and as well as we can. One of the first things that struck me was that palpable potential of all those materials sitting in our warehouse is inextricably tied to the people who interact with them and the collective community need for materials, for leadership, for jobs, for dignity, for inspiration, for continuity and a friendly face and for meaningful work. That put the focus right back on what hadn't and won't change our values and turned our attention away from listening just to the pundits and the news people and the bloggers who have useful things to say to listening to our community. This is what we heard. A couple wrote in, we burst a pipe in our trailer home and can't afford the replacement parts. We need home resource. One woman expostulated, HR is my therapy. I come and walk the aisles and feel better about the world. Please open again soon. Another told us, I just took down an outbuilding and I'm stockpiling materials. My home looks like a junkyard, but I won't throw them away. Are you going to open again soon? And between that space of knowing only one thing with certainty, that we were already forever changed, and this space of right now, speaking to you through a mask and through a vast network of computers and phones and electrons, we have learned these things. The community needs us. Home resource is an essential service, not just because we supply hardware and plumbing parts or even meaningful work and zero waste leadership. Home resource is an essential service because we are in a place of connection a place of dignity, a place of inspiration and action, of addressing really big societal challenges, social justice, the linear economy, institutional racism, climate change, in tangible, doable ways that include everyone. We learn that as much as the community needs us, we need the community. We need your material and monetary donations, your collaboration, your good ideas and creativity, and your time. At the core of our work, there is a reciprocity, a relationship, an interplay with the community that gives home resource its own momentum and vitality. We do not exist without you. We talk about safety every day at home resource. We learned what else safety can include, how many people we want to protect, how many swear words people can level at us for requiring them to wear a mask. We learned what it means to ask an exhausted and fearful staff to go back to work with people and materials coming from who knows where and how brave and vulnerable people can be when they believe in what they do and when they know that other people are counting on them. We learned how many people will stand up for us when we ask customers to follow safety best practices and that for every loud detractor, there are 10 and probably more like 70 quiet, firm and deeply supportive individuals ready to back us up. We were reminded that difficult times require firm leadership, determination, a steady pace, clear direction, and a commitment to moving forward on the things that matter. We were reminded that the things that matter to us matter to the rest of our community, that people feel the urgency and importance of our work as much as we do, and that they need us to be here now and into the future. We learned not for the first time that when we give what we have and ask for what we need, the community supports us. We were reminded that there are leaders everywhere in this mountain town at the confluence of the headwaters of our continent with its short, perfect seasons and long, messy ones and a sky vast and expressive with cloud and light. So we listened and we learned and we pivoted like everyone else and we've been taking action ever since. We determined, practiced, and tested safety protocols. We budgeted, cash flowed, and budgeted again. We realized how much money we lost when we had no customers in the store for six weeks, over $100,000, and how soon we would be unable to make payroll and mortgage on that particular trajectory, mid-May. We started rolling back out 
by taking donations and reopening our store to customers. Next, we brought back our youth interns who need jobs, job references, and structure now more than ever. We reached out to volunteers, made an entire new version of ZWAP online, called ZWAPO, of course, ran a virtual roundtable, pushed for increased zero waste infrastructure. We haven't gotten people safely back in our wood shop, a confined space, not yet, but we are back to keeping hundreds of tons of not garbage out of the landfill annually. I want to write a poem. I want to dance with metaphors and sing in a lilting tongue that acknowledges all the intensity, worry, confusion, and soothes. I want to fill you with the beautiful moments, to shine a light on the incredible everyday heroes and heroines who show up and help each other and help the planet and stare discrimination down and fight climate change and shoulder each trial with straight backs and chins uplifted, not knowing where it will end, but not giving up. I want to write an elegy to the year 2020, but 2020 isn't over. And while maybe I will do those things someday, write a poem or an elegy to 2020, it is almost never wise to wish time away and we are still engaged with this year, whatever it brings. And every minute that we are here and awake, we have the opportunity to do something positive. Come with us tonight and do just that. I want you to know, every one of you watching, how inspired we are by all the people who won't stop being generous, who won't have their creativity and compassion, their heritage, their gifts, or their choice to show up how they want to laid waste or even laid aside despite their fear and disquietude. So when I do write my elegy to 2020, I will talk about the people who showed up at their very best, often when feeling their very worst and did really important things together. We collaborated and grew community even while we were socially distanced. We kept a steady course to a sustainable, just, zero waste world despite the setbacks, the noise, and the bullies. We did what was right for the people right here, right now, and for the children growing up into an uncertain tomorrow. We fought injustices to people and planet and acted with dignity. And we need you to help us make sure that this story keeps coming true into the future. If you are like me, you give to good causes but you are not always sure who needs your help or where your money goes when you donate. At Home Resource, I can tell you, your money goes to employing Eli and Paul, to hiring Lexi, to running youth workshops, to support the arts and creativity and collaboration, to empowering our fifth grade zero waste ambassadors and providing all manner of eclectic materials inexpensively and bringing people together every single day in the nonpartisan, non-political, and absolutely essential path to build a more sustainable tomorrow. I am still learning. Robin Wall Kemmerer, author of Braiding Sweetgrass, scientist, mother, and member of the Potawatomi Nation, offers profound insights into ways of being and knowing that are enduring and deeply relevant to today. She states, this is the fundamental nature of gifts. They move and their value increases with the passage. A gift that is passed hand to hand grows richer as it is honored in every exchange. At Home Resource, we believe in a vibrant future. We know it is doable. We believe in our artists, our builders, our Halloween customers, our youth and our elders, our farmers and ranchers, our DIYers and our clean out the garagers. We are community. We are the leaders of today and tomorrow and we are making a difference. Please consider making a gift to fund the need. We will honor it. The High Stakes Foundation will match it and we will pass it hand to hand straight into our shared community where it will grow richer and more beautiful and continue to build that bright tomorrow together. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Dawn McGee, a SponCon team member, someone who's, been, who's understood the benefits Home Resource brings to our community from the beginning. 
and is a longtime supporter, works for the High Stakes Foundation, and is willing to sit here with in front of all of you to, on this Sunday night and talk about our match challenge. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Katie. Hey, y'all. Um, you know, really hard year for everybody, and I hope that you have managed to find some good and solace in some of the quiet times and that you and your family are as well as can be under these circumstances. Katie approached me about uh, a little over three years ago and said, would you consider making a challenge grant for our auction? And our largest grant generally runs around $25,000. And so at that time we went to our board and the board agreed, hey, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Let's do $25,000 for the next three years. As it turned out, because of the generous community and supporters of Home Resource in the first year, we did, I'm not quite sure what the number was, but I know it was over 25 and we stepped to the plate and matched that. And then the second year we were like, maybe we could go bigger. Maybe we could do $50,000. And I can tell you that this community responded to the challenge yet again, and we raised more than $50,000 and we matched $50,000. And so this is our last and final year of doing this. Um, it's been a real privilege and a pleasure to be here and to work with Katie. Um, so this year we are going for the big one because they need all the help and support they can get. So we've agreed to match up to $75,000. And I'm fairly confident that if y'all do more than that, I'll go back to my board and say, hey, we need to do more than that. We need to match whatever gets given right now. So I'm gonna ask you to text the magic number that's up on your screen someplace. I don't have it memorized, um, but there's a real opportunity here. And I also just wanna say, I called Katie uh, last week just to talk about how this was gonna roll because it's a new format for everybody not being in person and not being able to celebrate everything that's good in home resource. And I, we were talking about a particularly difficult situation she had about uh, a staffing issue. And I, I just said to her, Katie, how are you gonna do that? And I just heard her dig super deep and say, I, I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we have to do it. And I just have to say, we can't let Katie and her team do that alone. So I just wanna show all the support we possibly can to say, you've got this, you've got this community and we've got you. And whether you interface in the areas of their youth and work programs, uh, zero waste, you're just a creative recycler and love to do projects, their commitment to social justice, their youth internship. I think that there's an ability to touch, like they, Katie just said, half the community rolls through home resource on an annual basis, most of us more than, more than once. So dig deep, stretch as deep as you can, because this is really super hard times for everybody. Doing it in this format is hard for everybody. So let's make this match the best that we possibly can do. And I'm counting on you. But you don't have to just take it from me. Uh, one of the summer interns there was a young woman uh, named Lexi Lynch this summer. And here's a word from her. Hi, I'm Lexi, and I've been working at Home Resources for about four months now. Um, I job was suggested to me by a teacher at school last year, and it sounded a lot better than being a fry cook at McDonald's. Um, and <laughs> since working here, um, I started in the middle of the pandemic, and everybody told me that they had no idea what they were doing or how to keep the store clean and safe, yet everybody here has been doing an amazing job keeping the store clean and a safe environment for me to work in. Um, since working here, I've noticed that I've overcome my lack of confidence and just kind of grown up a little bit, just become more of an adult. And I've learned how to use tools and gotten into woodworking and how to stock wood. It's real fun. <laughs> um, and it's taught me some independence and just how to be my own person. And I've realized that working here at Home Resources, it's more than a job, it's a community that takes you in and 
accepts you and helps you grow into being your own person. Katie asked me what my favorite part about working here is, and honestly, it's everything. Minus the weeds. Weed pulling's not that fun. But everything else here is super fun, and I love it here. Thanks, Lexi. Let's give it up for Lexi. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you, Lexi. We're so lucky to have folks in our community like Lexi. And Lexi, thank you for the weed pulling, even the weed pulling. The weed pulling is so important. Um, so again, we're here tonight. We're so close. Um, oh my goodness, 707, we're doing great. So <laughs> um, we have some home resource programs we wanna go through here. Um, again, this is, we're funding, we're funding <laughs> Community sustainability, these pro these fantastic programs at Home Resource, and of course education, which you've seen from a couple of the interns tonight. So let's keep those those donations coming. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, we got we have some from Marcy and from Vincent. This is great. Again, text seven six two seven eight. Again, that number is seven six two seven eight and text give and your amount. It's super easy, I just did it. And then you get a lovely little message right back saying that they've accepted your, your donation amount. So let's well, say thanks to Kaylee and Rob and Jennifer. Look at this, oh my gosh. And Joseph. Catherine, Anne, Beverly. Woo, thank you. Oh, we got Amanda, Kim, Vicky, Lila. Lisa and Marnie, this is so great. Okay, so let's, we're gonna talk about what your money actually goes towards. So $5,000, $5,000 will help us put on a solution-based construction and demolition round table, or $5,000 allows five fifth grade classes to have the full ZWAP experience. So ZWAP, Z-W-A-P, that's zero waste ambassador program that allows, so $5,000 allows five fifth grade classes to participate in that program. So dig deep folks, stretch, let's see $5,000. How about $2,500? That funds an empowering woodshop skills building workshop for six to eight folks with less opportunity. Ooh, oh, who else did we just get? We got a Katie. That's not you. It must be a different Katie. Well, um, for $1,500, $1,500 is a full school uh, credit for the youth internship. We just heard about a couple of them. So $1,500. Let's see if we can get a $1,500 up here. That's, yep. Full school credit for the youth internship for $1,500. you? Twelve hundred will help us zero waste an entire school, folks. Last year, Jeanette Rankin Elementary went zero waste. Woo. Yay, Jeanette Rankin! And then, okay, how about five hundred? You guys can do five hundred. Oh, look at that! It's fantastic. Okay, five hundred uh, funds an artist in residence. Who's our? Who's your last artist in residence? Stella Nall, she donated a beautiful piece to the auction. Oh, fantastic. Yo, okay. Somebody owns that Someone now. owns that. That's so great. Thank you, Stella. For $200, you can fund the expenses of one fix it clinic where we teach people how to repair things instead of throwing them away. Our, I'd like to just throw in a quick thanks to our fix it volunteers. They're amazing, the coaches. <laughs> and for $100, Let's see those 100. Come on, folks, text 76278. 100 bucks gives an entire month's worth, uh, stewards a month's worth of sustainable Missoula columns in the current, the Missoulian, what other uh, media do we do? Missoulian and current? Yep. Okay, so that's a month's worth of sustainability columns uh, for our local media, $100. $75 is one round trip bus rental for a ZWAP field trip. 
perhaps to the landfill, perhaps to home resource. I was just at the landfill a few months ago and it's it's amazing. Um, that is, that's a that's quite a field trip. Um, okay, so for fifty dollars, let's see here. Fifty dollars. That's a youth apprentice uniform and safety equipment. So fifty dollars. Yep, here we go. Nice job. Oh, they're coming in. This is fantastic. Again, text seven six two seven eight. Type the word give and your amount. Fifty dollars gives a youth apprentice uniform and safety equipment help these programs keep going, keep our youth safe while they're while they're working. Wow, we're getting close. Okay, 712. We're getting there. Okay, I think we're gonna Katie has some announcements. This might yep. be the moment. Okay. <laughs> nice job. Maybe the moment you've all been waiting for. And that is the announcement of our grand prize winner. Yay. Spontaneous construction. <laughs> Woo! This year it goes to team Oops, we did it again <laughs> with their global warming fire pit. <laughs> and Quirk, there she is, one of the team members. Thanks so much and congratulations. Fantastic. Nice job, everyone. Every single team did amazing work this year. This item. Uh, any item that wins has to have excellent craftsmanship, artistic value, and um, benefit to the auction. So whoever wins that is going to be able to stay warm and see their friends outside all winter. Congratulations. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, wow. We've done well done, Missoula. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. The best thing I well, do. well done, Missoula. So fund the needs going to close in about an hour. We are so close, so close, folks. So um, again, text 76278, give and your donation amount. We're going to close this down in an hour. Uh, so you have a, a few chances here. Let your friends know, spread it on Facebook. You know, maybe your great aunt in Baltimore. Help us reach our goal. Be safe. Be kind. We couldn't do it without you. Thanks so much, Missoula. Have a great night. And, ooh, it's coming in. We're doing great. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> we won? Yay! We won. Mute on. Okay. <laughs>